If you've never visited the Great Smoky Mountains National Park in Tennessee and North Carolina, I highly recommend adding it to your bucket list. This past June, I took a trip to Appalachia with a goal of chasing as many waterfalls as I could and attempting to paint them from life. Waterfalls, of course, are moving targets. There are many potential obstacles when it comes to painting from life. Add moving water to your list of plein air challenges and this definitely compounds the difficulty. This subject matter humbled me so much, but I learned a lot. And today I want to share with you some tips and tricks I managed to pick up along my journey for capturing the beauty and movement of waterfalls using watercolor. Well, I just got to North Carolina. It was a long travel day and I just have to get outside. There's about two hours of light left. It's so gorgeous here. It's incredibly lush. I just can't even believe how green it is. There's literally vines growing on everything. So I found a hike called the Big Bradley Falls. So we're going to check it out and just get outside. Where I was growing up, we didn't have waterfalls really. And where I live now, it's so dry that you don't have waterfalls unless it's springtime and it's the snow melt coming down the mountains. So the sound of this crashing running water fills me with excitement, a sense of adventure, a sense of wonder. And I just can't wait to see what's around the bend. All right, I'm coming down this little beaten path down to the water. You can kind of hear it getting louder. I don't know if this is the actual falls or not, but it sounds pretty big. Oh my gosh, I'm standing on pretty sandy ground here. Very, very wet. Someone built a little cairn on there. Well, I'm gonna have to stop and paint and see if I can get a painting in before I have to head back. My first tip is to bring a standing easel. Two out of the three waterfall hikes I did had no dry areas for sitting, and the weather was very wet and rainy all week, so the ground everywhere was soft and muddy. For this trip, I used my Taylor Seamount bamboo easel attached to a cheap lightweight tripod from Amazon. The easel has built-in magnets that hold my metal paint tin securely, and my watercolor journal is supported with clips. I'm just gonna use my small journal today. Everything in here is from life, so I have to work fast, I'm losing light really quickly. Using a standing easel also ensures that you can see the waterfall at eye level, which is usually much better than looking up at it from ground level. Of course, if you have a disability or are unable to stand for long periods of time, definitely research your waterfall hikes in advance. Because of their popularity, some waterfalls, as you'll see in my second painting, do have benches nearby. Tip number two is to work small, especially if you have limited time. For this painting, I used a four and a half by six inch Baohong journal in a horizontal format. I sketched and painted very loosely and quickly since I was afraid it was going to start raining any minute. Because I worked so small, I was able to complete this satisfying little study in just 20 minutes. It's really hard to capture the movement of water and that's partly why I'm here in North Carolina. I wanna paint as many waterfalls as I can and just try to get better at this. And this is the only way, right? And why not get some hiking in and some exercise and some great outdoors while we're at it, right? The Deep Creek Three Waterfalls hike on the southern side of Smoky Mountains National Park turned out to be a treasure trove of beauty. On this hike, you can explore the Junie Wank Falls, Indian Creek Falls, and Tom Branch Falls. I was able to get some beautiful reference photos of the first two, but because it was lightly raining all afternoon, I wasn't able to paint them from life. I found the nearest waterfall hikes that I could right here next to Bryson City. And this is the first one. It's called Junie Wank Falls. And you can already hear it. It's absolutely beautiful. All right. Well, now I know that that little waterfall I painted on my first day here was just a baby waterfall. These are the legit huge waterfalls of Great Smoky Mountains National Park. And that was just the first one. I can't wait to chase some more. So I'm trying to decide if I'm going to even do a painting tonight. It's already five o'clock and it is, you know, close to the summer solstice. So I know the days are going to be a lot longer, which is amazing. I potentially have another three hours of light. So that's plenty of time to get a painting in. 
but I don't know if you've ever come across this problem when you're outside and trying to decide what to paint, but it is sensory overload. How do you narrow it down? How do you pick what to paint? There's so much beauty around you. So I don't know, do I paint a waterfall? It's like the most cliche thing, but that's what I'm here for, right? Because they're gorgeous and we don't have these in Colorado. Do I paint a waterfall? Do I paint a close-up of a tree covered in moss or one of the rhododendron flowers? It's so hard to decide. I think ultimately, if you see something that just screams out to you and says, me, me, paint me, <laughs> If you see something that you're just really drawn to, even if it's not what you came here expecting to paint, you just gotta stop and paint it. So, I am still currently looking for that thing. <laughs> and I'm also just enjoying hiking and being outside. Super easy, super relaxing. Lots of people out here. And it's raining again. <laughs> My third tip is to focus on enjoying the experience. This is a bit more of a high level mindset bit of advice, but I think we all need this reminder that even if you have the best materials, tools, and techniques, if you focus solely on getting good results for your efforts, you will be setting yourself up for disappointment. Many of us, myself included, struggle with perfectionism. We can be so hard on ourselves. Maybe we set out on a painting adventure with a clear vision in mind of what the outcome should be, but I find that this can often rob you of joy and ruin the experience because let's face it, we're never going to recreate in a quick painting something so majestic as the real thing. Rather than trying to perfectly capture all the grandeur of the waterfall in your painting, remember to have fun and enjoy the sights and sounds of the living, moving world all around you. Plein air painting is not about perfection. It's about practicing your art through experimentation and play. I came back to the Tom Branch waterfall, the biggest one here that I've seen so far. It just, it just climbs and climbs. And I had to summon up the courage to come back and try to paint it. And it wasn't nearly as busy now. It's getting later in the day. It's kind of dinner time. So there weren't nearly as many people. Sometimes, you know, we have to remind ourselves that if we don't try, how will we know if we can do it or not, you know? And I was questioning myself. I was thinking, oh, it's just so huge. It's massive. I don't know how I'm going to fit it into my tiny little watercolor paper. And I just reminded myself again, no, you can do this. Just, just try it. You'll be so sad if you don't. And go figure. I'm so glad I did. The third waterfall I painted during my trip to the Smokies was the majestic 120 foot beauty called Mingo Falls. For this one, I did record my entire painting from start to finish, and the fully narrated tutorial is available in real time through my Watercolor Mastery membership. If you'd like to learn more, click the link in the description below. I've saved my most practical tips for last, so here we go. Tip number four, do a quick sketch before diving in with paint. It's so important to narrow down your focal point in your painting, especially with so many elements in the scene competing for your attention. Before diving in, take a moment to study the waterfall, looking at the big light and dark shapes. Ask yourself, what are the most interesting shapes? How can I create a beautiful flow between them? What can I leave out? What is essential to include? Doing a sketch will ensure that you have mapped out those elements so that you can more confidently go in with paint. Here I decided to focus on just the bottom portion of the waterfall. Since it was so tall and so complex, I knew that if I tried to fit the whole waterfall into my journal, it wouldn't necessarily make a great composition and I would just get frustrated. Tip number five, leave the white of the paper for the water. With watercolor, it's necessary to plan ahead for your whites. That's why the sketch is so important. Once you have your sketch, paint carefully around the water. I started with the rocks on the left side, applying colors side by side to show the rock shapes in a kind of abstract way. I was very careful not to cover up the white water, except with very light neutral grays in areas where the water was flowing in shadow. Once I blocked in my big shapes, I could then add little dark streaks to represent the rocks visible between the steady streams of crashing water. As an aside, one of the nice things about painting waterfalls is that they look good when it's overcast and on sunny days. There's always a strong value contrast between the water and the rocks, which makes it a delight to paint regardless of the weather. Tip number six, 
use an opaque white for the splashing water. Now I don't always remember to bring white with me when I'm plein air painting, but in this case I happen to have a Faber-Castell white marker in my pack that worked perfectly for adding those delicate little dots representing the splashing moving water. Sometimes it's these careful finishing touches that can really add that last little bit of movement, the icing on the cake, so to speak. Well, I almost didn't come here today, but I'm so glad I did. This is Mingo Falls, and it is the tallest waterfall I have ever seen. It's one of the largest in the state park. Now, because it was so tall, I decided just to narrow my focus down to a portion of the waterfall and I'm really glad I did that. I just don't think I could have tackled the whole thing with my small composition. Maybe a challenge for next time. But um, I'm really happy I came and painted today. There were a lot of kids checking out the waterfall and checking out my painting, which was super cute. That's always fun to just chat with people as they're coming by. But there's the finished painting, a great way to finish my last full day at Smoky Mountains National Park. Now I know painting waterfalls from life sounds intimidating, but if you ever have the opportunity to try it, I hope you will. The best way to learn is to tackle our insecurities and weaknesses head on, and who knows, maybe you'll discover that it's actually a whole lot of fun. Thanks for joining me on my adventures. I had a blast chasing waterfalls. Happy painting, my friends. I'll see you again soon.